Hi guys, today we're going to learn basics of collision detection um, based on bounding boxes. It is usually one of the first things that is taught um, in games development 101 because of its simplicity. And when we're talking about 2D games, it's rather straightforward to do collision detection using bounding boxes. And um, this is uh, what we're going to do in this tutorial. Mind you, there are um, other types of collision detection techniques which um, have their own advantages and disadvantages. So um, some of them are quite generic, um, while others are specialized in a particular type of collision detection um, to either make use of various data structures or to optimize um, performance if certain things need to be done. So what you have, or what I have on the screen, is um, two objects. So just think of them as two typical game objects that we want to check collision detection um, for. So we want to know if they're colliding or not, basically. And the importance of collision detection is essentially what um, we want to know if they're colliding or not in order to do certain things like so if we were to talk about player and a coin, so then player could collect a coin when it collides with a coin. Uh, it could be a bullet, an enemy, it could be any projectile and player. So basically various types of objects and um, we want to know if they're colliding or not. Um, at some point we also probably want to know um, about their types, but currently we're going to focus on bounding boxes. So I have two objects on the screen. The one I can control, um, let's call it player, and we have certain um, other object, which we can call a coin, I suppose. So um, let's just go through the code that I have currently. So this is a typical application, JavaFX application, um, but the stuff that we're uh, going to cover in this tutorial are, are applicable. Um, because we're talking about concepts rather than anything concrete. So you can use any language or any framework, um, anything you want. So what we have is a um, scene on which we attach um, key pressed and handler. So when I press W, S, A, and D, I can control my entity one, which is player. Uh, in fact, I could have called it player. Um, and then when, when we move the thing, we render stuff on the screen because we're doing kind of manual render. So we're clear the uh, graphics context. We draw entity one and we draw entity two. <clears throat> we have our canvas on which to draw and the graphics context. And these are the two entities I create. Um, these are X, Y, width and height. So if we come back to entity class, which is essentially any type of game object, um, depending on what kind of framework you're using, this will be called differently. Uh, an actor, an entity, a game object. So um, they're all various different names that mean essentially the same thing. So semantically, they're equivalent. And we only have one method, which is called draw. So we pass the graphics context and we draw a rectangle, um, unfilled rectangle with these coordinates or these values. And that is um, it, pretty much. So now we want to be able to determine if the two objects that we have, two entities, are colliding. Since they're both defined uh, defined as rectangles, bounding box, which is essentially also a rectangle, is um, the most straightforward way to perform collision detection. Um, but do keep in mind that there are other shapes. So it's generally we talk about bounding shapes rather than bounding boxes and box is just a case or an example of a bounding shape. It could be a circle, it could be an ellipse, it could be pretty much anything depending on what kind of game you want to develop and what requirements are. Um, so we're going to cre create a class called bbox, which is a um, central bounding box. There is actually a bounding box class in the JavaFX framework, and you can use that most of the time. Um, I'm going to do that manually just to demonstrate how you would do 
Um, down in the box, um, how you'd write a class if you were to use a different language or a different framework. Uh, what we need to have is so central dimensions or various points of the bounding box. We need to have minimum max, maximum max. Um, so these would be the values or the points along the x axis, the minimum point and the maximum point um, of that bounding box. We also need minimum y and maximum y. So if you were to do this with a 3D object, so 3D bounding box or bounding, uh, bounding cube rather, then you'll just add a, minimal, a minimum z and a maximum z coordinate. And we'll just generate a uh, generate constructor for all those values. <clears throat> and um, you might have more than just single method, but for now I'm just going to have a single method which will say is colliding. And this is the one that we'll use to determine if the bounding box, um, this one, is colliding with the other one. And it is rather simple because we just check if maximum x is greater or equal to the um, other minimum x. And we need to make sure that minimum x of the other, or the other maximum x, um, actually let's do this. Minimum x of this one is less um, than or equal to other maximum x. And let's do y as well. Um, maximum y is greater or equal to other um, minimum y. And minimum y is less than or equal to other x y. So we're essentially, essentially checking the balance of um, the bounding box, and we check it against the other one. So it is the relationship between maximum max and minimum max, and max and min um, between the two. And this will give us whether they're colliding or not. You could have also checked um, sort of the other way around if minimum, if maximum x is less than other minimum max, then that would mean that there is no collision. So you could have created another method called is not colliding and then simply negate the billion value uh, here. It might be beneficial depending on, again, what you're doing. And some of these frameworks will also do that because it's slightly easier sometimes. Right, so uh, we could also have a delegate function or a delegate method here within the entity class so that we can easily check um, without querying the bounding box and then checking the bounding box collision, we could have a delegate method um, here that essentially says the same is colliding. Instead of passing the bounding box, we're passing the entity itself. And we also want to be able to generate a bounding box um, at runtime because when X and Y move, that would mean the bounding box minimum x and minimum y would also change, and the other um, two values as well. So let's have a function that returns a uh, bounding box for a particular entity. Turn new bounding box, uh, we take minimum x first, which is just x. Max x is going to be x plus width, and similar for y. So as you can see, it is um, very straightforward. We take the leftmost point and the rightmost point, which generates um, the bounding rectangle. So one way to define bounding box would be to say that is the smallest um, rectangle that encloses that completely encloses the sprite or whatever we're talking about the object. So we can do bounding box of this one is colliding with other bounding box. And that should just work. So we'll come back here, render, clear, and we just want to display um, stroke text. 
just want to display if E1 is colliding with E2. If it is colliding, then write collision, else write no collision. And we're going to put that text somewhere um, in the top right corner. And if we got the collision or the logic right, then that should be the same collision right now, yeah. So as you can see, um, it says no collision when they're not colliding. And as soon as we collide, it says collision. So now we um, know when they're colliding and uh, when they're not colliding. A nice thing about this is, um, like I said, simplicity. So that is the whole logic of your um, collision detection. There are, like I said, various other techniques and hopefully I'll have time to cover them in future tutorials. But for now, we're going to leave it at this and that should be enough for um, basic 2D games. In fact, most 2D games, when you don't do any kind of rotation transformations, otherwise you'll need to do something like separating access theorem, which works uh, with rotation as well, rotations. That, um, this bounding box is essentially um, axis aligned bounding box, so AABB, um, something you might see on the internet. Um, also, when we talk about bounding boxes, we typically differentiate between two types of them, one being the logical bounds and the other um, visual bounds. So the visual bounds is um, what you see on the screen. So that would be um, that bounding box is exactly the same as the rectangle that represents that object. So the visual bounds are exactly the same. Logical bounds might differ uh, if you wanted them to. So for example, we want to make the hitbox or the bounding box smaller so that it's harder to um, hit that particular target. Or you might um, enlarge the bounding box, so make it larger so that it's a lot easier to hit the target. So there are various things to be considered and they're mostly dependent on the game. Um, and yeah, I suppose that is it for now. So we covered basics of collision detection and why it is important. So we want to know when the two objects collide because we can then query um, them and um, fire some sort of collision event, which other um, systems or modules of your game library, game engine might be listening to to know um, what to do. You might add then um, an event handler, say when player type collision, uh, when there is a collision between player type and a coin type, then player gets bonus points or something similar. We also covered how to implement um, simplistic bounding box, um, axis aligned bounding box. And we kind of learned what bounding boxes are, what bounding shapes are, and um, you should now be able to do uh, basic collision detection in your uh, in most of your 2D games. And that'll be it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.